All right, welcome. This is a, a supplemental uh, piece uh, with some several examples that are extra, 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 extra real. Um, so this is for one a day 12, uh, section 3.2. Um, we're looking at mathematical expectation in this part of our discoveries uh, for Math 360. Um, so our first one is going to be, uh, we're going to let u of x equal the difference of x and b, or b is some parameter, some real number parameter, uh, squared. And we want to suppose that the expected value of this quantity, this u of x, exists. And if that's the case, then we want to figure out how do we minimize um, this expectation value with respect to the parameter. Okay. Uh, so to start off, uh, we're going to start off with what we're given. Uh, this is a pretty straightforward algebraic uh, approach. I'm going to foil out or multiply out the interior there, distribute, and we get an x squared minus 2bx uh, plus ab squared. Since b and x are uh, x real numbers, they are commutative, and so we can not only combine them, but also bx is the same as xb, which gives us the 2 in the middle. Uh, two terms. Okay, and now we can use the linear uh, linearity properties of the expected expectation operator and uh, move across the sum and the difference here. Uh, and so we can write this as the expectation value of x squared uh, plus the expectation value of negative 2bx uh, and then plus the expected value of b squared. And then again, we're going to lean on the uh, properties of the expectation operator. Uh, that the expectation value of a constant can be factored outside of the operator. And the expected value of a constant value is uh, that value. So b squared is constant with respect to this uh, expectation operator. And so uh, if, I, if you think about factoring it out, the expectation of one is just one. So however you choose to see it, this expectation value here just becomes b squared. Okay, so simplifying that out, we get expectation of x squared minus 2b, expectation of x, uh, plus b squared. Okay, uh, so let's define this function here as uh, g of b, just for uh, simplicity's sake. Uh, and then um, that means that to find the minimum, or to see if a minimum exists, we look at dg db, that be careful when you say that, and set that equal to zero to find any critical points. Okay. Uh, so with respect to b, this term here is a constant, and we're left with uh, minus 2 expectation of x uh, plus 2b. Okay, uh, And then solving for b, uh, the two's cancel, and I add the expectation of x over, okay, which means that b star, the critical value here, is going to be equal to the expectation of x. Mm. OK, uh, if we consider uh, d squared g db squared, in other words, the second derivative, uh, notice that that is exactly equal to 2, which is greater than 0, okay, which implies by the which implies by the second derivative test that um, b star, this b, is a minimum or uh, the expectation operator, which is exactly what we wanted to show. OK, all right, I hope that was helpful. And uh, let's tackle the next problem. Welcome back to example two. Uh, in example two, we're going to look at um, assuming that x is distributed as a hypergeometric, uh, where the geometric is the sum of uh, n1 successes, or n1 yeses, or n1 chips, uh, and n2 which is the other chip or the other case. Uh, and what we're going to look for is the expected uh, value of uh, this x. And that's what we're going to try and try and compute. Okay. Uh, so that's what we're that's what we're looking for to to solve or to simplify or to compute in this problem. Uh, so um, let's go ahead and get started. So uh, we talked about the hypergeometric in a uh, previous lesson. And luckily, my memory is super awesome, so I can't remember when or what that was. But um, we do know that uh, the expected value of x that is distributed uh, in this fashion is equal to the sum of x 
in uh, the support or the space S uh, over uh, X times uh, F of X, where uh, F of X was given by our little friend here. Uh, so it's N1 choose X of those things, and then that leaves uh, N minus N1, also known as N2, uh, might not choose N minus X of the other thing over uh, how many different ways can you choose uh, little N objects taken uh, from a complete set of N things. Okay, uh, and so there are a couple of um, details to, to note here that'll help us in their simplification process uh, for F of X. In particular, let's look at the denominator here uh, for F of X. And so uh, just recall that N choose N is the same thing as N factorial over little n factorial times capital uh, N minus lowercase n factorial. Okay, uh, and so if we think about what does it mean uh, for the factorial, we have capital N, and we have capital N minus one, and then little n minus two, and dot, 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 all the way down to one. And that's gonna be divided by uh, N times N minus one times N minus two, dot, 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 all the way down to one times N minus N factorial. Okay, uh, so if we notice uh, that N times N minus one is the same thing as N times N minus one factorial, right? Uh, the same is true here. This is just little N minus one factorial times N. And that's nice because that then allows us to factor out a, a ratio of capital N to lowercase N. Uh, and we will use that um, in our calculation here. Okay, all right, so um, which means then that the ratio of capital N over N is the same thing as uh, that times uh, N minus one, choose N minus one uh, as the combination for the binomial expansion there. Binomial coefficient, I guess, is a better, more accurate statement. Uh, so the N choose R sort of thing. Okay, uh, so let's um, plug this in. Then to, uh, I guess I should just finish it out while, I'm, while I was saying that. So this is n over n, and then n minus one over n minus one. Okay, so n over n times, or yeah, times uh, n minus one choose n minus one. Okay, uh, so those are equivalent statements, and that's going to be really helpful. So let's look at the expected value then here. And um, oh, you know what? I should mention that here too. Uh, so there's one more thing to notice. Um, our son, our son, <laughs> um, is um, starts at zero and goes all the way through every value of x and s. But for x equals zero, if that is in this element, notice that uh, the zero in this is going to whatever f of x is. It doesn't matter um, as long as it's finite, and we know that it is since we assume it's existing. Uh, is that the uh, product of zero times that thing is going to be zero? So <clears throat> our summation, we can actually. Uh, restrict a little bit and say that we're going to have x strictly greater than uh, than zero, and it's still going to be in the value of s, okay? Uh, so I think that's really uh, important to note. And then if we throw this in the expectation value, we have x here. Uh, and then if we write out uh, f of x in, in the sum with our substitution here for the value in the denominator, what we have is um, the value x, and then we have uh, n1 factorial over x factorial times uh, n, I was wondering if that was lowercase n, n minus x factorial. And then uh, we're not gonna do anything yet with the um, uh, with the second part of this factorial. I will call n minus n1, uh, n2, uh, just for the sake of writing, it's a little bit simpler. So this is n2 choose um, n minus x. And then all of this, of course, is over the uh, capital N over lowercase n. And this is not a choose, this is a ratio, this is a fraction here. And then this is n minus one times uh, n minus one. So that's that's the substitution that we made in there. Okay, uh, so a couple of things are gonna happen. First, I'm gonna move this term out in front. It's the reciprocal of the reciprocal. So uh, this is gonna be flipped over. And then note here, um, there's a common factor of x there. Since I have x on top, and then x factorial is this x times x minus one, x minus two, da, 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 all the way down to one. Uh, so those common x's reduce to one. 
Uh, and this then is just going to be similar to here. It's going to be in, it'll be x minus 1 factorial. OK, uh, so there's that simplification. Um, what else should I point out? Uh, let's go ahead and rewrite it, I think, and uh, gather our sentiment to see where we're at. So we're going to have n over n, the sum from uh, x being greater than 0, n s. Uh, those cancel. We're going to get what? Uh, in one factorial and we'll have a, uh, x minus one factorial and those canceling that's that's this part and then a n one minus x factorial and then we still have a what a n two choose n minus x and then we have over at that, we have a n minus one, n minus one. Okay. Uh, here, um, this, let's do the same thing. It looks like, I feel like we can put this in the same form here. So if we take this one and we write this as n one times n one minus one factorial, then this is a constant with respect to uh, n, and that way we can factor that out. Uh, and then this, Right here. Yeah, oh yeah, I see it. Okay, so that'll allow us then to rewrite this uh, in a really nice nice fashion, a really nice way here. So let's go ahead and, go ahead and factor that out. So we're going to have uh, n1 over n times little n, uh, the sum of uh, zeros greater than, less than x is n s, and then we're going to have this is n1 minus 1, over choose x uh, minus one factorial. So n one minus one over x minus one. I'm gonna choose those. And then we have one less choice uh, for our, our, our values. And so that's gonna become, uh, that means that n two is gonna be n minus one. So we have one less choice minus uh, x minus one values there all divided by uh, n minus one over n minus one. Well, that's really good news then because this quantity here is exactly what we were looking for. That's the, it looks worse than it um, actually is. You might be thinking like, oh no, we have gotten ourselves into a pickle. Uh, what exactly are we trying to show here? Um, but notice that for x greater than zero, uh, what we have here is the probability of obtaining x minus one, um, whatever you want to call them, chips or, uh, I don't know. Uh, these are usually the examples that you usually see uh, are like red and blue chips or something like that. So choose colors, right? So this is, uh, this is n minus one. Uh, there's n minus, there's n, not minus one. So there's n one red chips. We've taken one of those out, so to speak. And so we have one fewer to choose from. So this is the X minus one of those red chips, of those N minus one chips that we took of the sample, we've taken those sample out. Um, and so that means then that there are, uh, of the N2 blue chips, there are N minus one minus X minus one uh, chips available for, for that. And so this uh, is summing over all of this probability space. And by definition of that, um, occurrence, then this has to exactly equal one. And so this whole summoned is summing over the entire space. And I'm trying to give a better way of saying it, it's summed over all possible values of x minus one. So its sum must be uh, the sum of all those possible possible probabilities of x minus one. Therefore, it has to be equal to one. Okay. I'll say that one more time, see if I can say it a little bit more precisely. Okay, so for x greater than zero, which is here, the probability of obtaining x minus one red chips from n minus one chips, n minus one chips, n minus one chips, right? Uh, selected from the n minus one red chips and n two blue chips. Okay, that's what we have here. But since we're summing over all possible values of x minus one, this sum, is all the sums, or is the sum is all the sums of all the possible probabilities of x minus one. Okay, I hope that makes sense. And so this has to equal one. And so we're just left with then the expectation of 
expected value of this x or this uh, for this distribution has to then equal n1 over n times n. That was not. Let's uh, go ahead and jump to the next example. Uh, I think for that one, I have a couple of examples I want to show, um, but they're very similar. Uh, welcome back to this example. So this is example three and the extra extra read all about it. Uh, for this one, we want to uh, let X have the PMF uh, X over six for the values of one, two, and three. And we're gonna just compute uh, the mean standard deviation and the variance. Okay. All right, so we're gonna compute these expected values um, and get started with that. So, uh, mu is just the expected value of x, which is going to be the sum of x equal 1, 2, 3 of x times f of x, which is going to be uh, 1 times f of 1 plus 2 times f of 2 plus uh, 3 times f of 3. Uh, each of these f's has a 1 6 in common, so I'm just going to factor that out everything. And this is going to leave uh, 1 times 1. Uh, so this is going to be 1 plus uh, 2 times 2. So it's going to give me uh, 4 plus uh, 3 times 3. Uh, so it's going to give me oh, I'm going to say 6. Yeah. Uh, so it's going to give me 9. Uh, adding this up, I get 9, uh, 10, and 4. So it's what, 14 uh, divided by 6. So this is going to be uh, 14 over 6, uh, which can be reduced to 7 uh, over 3 is the uh, is mu okay uh, then we can use uh, the variance uh, is x the value of x minus mu uh, squared and so uh, it's going to be the expected value of x squared minus 2 mu expected value of x uh, plus expected value of x squared. Um, actually, that's well, that's mu. So it's mu. I kind of ruined that. That's mu squared. Okay, and then that's going to simplify. This is mu squared, so this is going to be e to the x squared minus there's two mu squared here, single mu squared there, so minus mu squared. All right, uh, so we need to calculate this bad boy, and then um, we already know what this is. That's 7 over 3. Uh, so let's go ahead and calculate that value. Uh, so that's going to be the sum of x equals 1 to 3 of x squared f of x. That's going to be 1 squared f of 1 plus... 2 squared f of 2 plus uh, 3 squared f of 3. Uh, and so again, f1, f2, and f3 all have a 1, 6 in common. So I'm going to factor that out. Uh, and this is going to give me 1 squared, which is 1 times 1. So it's going to be 1. Plus this is going to be 2 to the squared times 2. So it's going to be 8. Plus 9 times 3 is going to give me uh, 27. Uh, and so it's going to be 36 over 6, which is going to give me a uh, 6. Okay. Uh, so we have then that sigma squared is equal to expected value of x squared minus mu squared, which is going to give me 6 minus uh, what, 7 thirds squared. That's going to give me, um, that's going to be 9 on the denominator. To make this a 9, uh, a equal, equivalent uh, piece, I'm going to multiply top and bottom here by 9, so it's going to give me. Uh, 54 minus 49 over 9, uh, 54 minus 5 ninths. Okay. And so then, uh, so there's the variance, and now uh, sigma is going to equal the square root of 5 over 3. Okay, all right, there we have it for, um, I guess I'll call this one part A, or problem A. Okay, so problem A, so we're going to do uh, another problem, problem B. Um, which is similar to this, except uh, it's for a different distribution and will be a little bit more 
I don't want to call it theoretical, but um, let's see. We want to look at, um, so this is 3B, uh, 360, uh, one a day, 12, 3.2. Okay, uh, so 3B if you want, uh, the extra extras. Uh, so let's assume that X is distributed um, uniformly uh, with M values or M entries. Uh, and we want to uh, calculate uh, the expected value of, of this x. Okay, well, then the uh, expected value is going to be the sum from uh, x equals 1 to n of x, f of x. Uh, here, since these are all, it's a uniformly distributed, uh, the f of x is just going to be 1 over the number of values that we have, so one over n of them. Uh, and so let's um, go ahead and plug that in. So we get the sum, that's a really bad signal. Uh, um, x equals one to m of x times one over m. Okay, this is a constant with respect to the sum, so it can come out and we have uh, one over m times the sum from x equals 1 to m of x. This part has a closed form. Uh, this is just a sum of the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, up to m. Uh, and so its form is going to be m, m plus 1, all divided by 2. Okay, and so we can simplify this then that mu is equal to 1 over m times m, m plus 1 over 2. Let's simplify reducing to 1, so you're left with uh, m plus one over two is the uh, mean for this, or the expected value of x. Uh, and now for the uh, variance of this, we're gonna calculate the square of this minus mu squared. Um, we already know this one, that's here. Uh, the expected value of uh, x squared is gonna equal this um, um, x equals 1 to m of x squared times 1 over n. Uh, and so 1 over m times the sum of x squared. Uh, when this is a finite sum, x going from 1 to m, this has a closed form of 1 over m times uh, m, m plus 1, 2m plus 1, all over 6. Uh, here, and m cancels. And so we're left with uh, m plus 1 times 2m plus 1 divided by 6 minus um, m plus 1 over 2 quantity squared. Okay, and then uh, if you simplify that out, uh, it's a little bit of algebra. Um, I believe you get that sigma squared, which is the uh, result of this, so bringing this down here. Uh, you get about m squared minus 1 over 12, okay, which implies then that sigma is the positive root of this, so it's going to be the square root of m squared minus 1 over 12. And you can simplify that, obviously, but uh, for the sake of time, uh, there is the second example there. All right, let's go ahead and pause this, and I think I have one more example. All right, uh, this is not necessarily uh, an example in terms of like calculation kind of things, though I did want to show uh, something that kind of already alluded to, uh, used in the previous example, for uh, for example. Uh, but if f is a, if r is not, f, if r is a positive integer uh, and the expectation value of x to the r in this form, if it's finite, if it exists, um, then we call that the rth moment of this distribution about zero. And uh, a little bit more generally, generally, hmm, I'm making up language here, the expectation value of x minus b to the r, um, again, assuming that this exists and all of that goodness, goodness uh, x and r, uh, then x minus b uh, raised to the r of f of x. This is the rth moment about the point b. Uh, and so this is really helpful. Um, in fact, uh, I don't remember when, but we used the uh, relationship uh, earlier. Um, and uh, it's cool. Like you can use this. Uh, it shows up a lot in some of the more of the theoretical pieces behind the scenes and stuff like that. And just in calculations as well. Um, let's look at this uh, particular uh, expansion of this idea. So if we look at X 
uh, equal to x times x minus 1 times x minus 2. So this is the x minus r plus 1. So this is the uh, the factorial moment. Um, uh, that, and this is really cool. So when uh, r equals 2, uh, then for this one, we can use it to uh, derive a uh, a really nice relationship, um, which you, we just used. So, uh, so just kind of leading down the progression of, of cool things that are useful tools. Uh, so let's look at this. So if we have the expectation of x times x minus 1, again, this is the r equals 2 case. Um, then this is the expectation of x squared minus the expectation of x, which is, of course, should look very uh, familiar using the property, properties of the linearity of the expectation operator to separate the difference there. Um, and so, uh, so you might say, well, if I uh, tell you that sigma squared is equal to the expectation of x times x minus 1, uh, and I will add to that the expectation of x uh, minus the expectation of x squared. Uh, this becomes exactly this. This is x squared minus the expectation of x plus the expectation of x coming from here minus the expectation of x squared. And so these two are zero pairs, and so they go to zero. And now we're left with, of course, uh, the expectation of x squared minus the expectation of x squared. In other words, the expectation of x squared minus the mean squared, which is what we used um, in the last example to simplify the calculation. Uh, and so this, uh, we can rewrite this really succinctly as, as sigma squared. Of course, then the uh, this is the variance, and then the square root of that would be just kind of deviation. So I think that's super cool, and I just wanted to uh, highlight uh, this is one application of the factorial uh, connection um, of this expansion and also the generation moments um, of about uh, a point B or about the origin if it's just expectation uh, in this form. Okay, all right, I think that was helpful, and I'll see you in the next.